Hey guys, welcome to pre-algebra. This is lesson 7-2, solve equations with variables on both sides. In this lesson, we'll be able to solve equations with variables on both sides of the equal sign. Let's start with solve and discuss it. Jackson and Brian collected an equal amount of money during a car wash. They collected cash and checks as shown below. If each check is written for the same amount, X, what is the total amount of money collected by both boys? Explain. Okay, so Jackson has this much money, Brian has that much money. Okay. Um, If the checks are written in the same amount, which you don't know, but that could be X, what is the total amount of money collected by both boys? So if you look at the money, um, Jackson has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 13, 14, right? So those are, those are 10 plus four. So 14 checks, 14 X. And that's gonna be um, $10 and $1, so $11. So Jackson has, 14x plus 11. What about Brian? Brian has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven checks. So seven checks, seven X. You don't know how much uh, the checks are, but they're gonna be represented as X, assuming that they're all written at the same amount. We got $20 and two $10 and one $5 and wait, two $5. Oh, that's not 11 then. Wait, that, that's $5. Sorry. I thought that was one. So that's actually 15. So one, five, one, five. And so Brian has um, 20, 30, 40, and uh, 50. 50 plus 7x. Okay. So what's the total amount of money collected by both boys? So we're gonna add them together, right? So 14X plus 15 plus 50 plus 7X would be the total money collected by both boys, which you can add the like terms. Right, so 14X and 7X, you can add them. 15 and 50, you can add them. And you get 21X plus 65, right? Okay, there. So we don't know how much total, but we know whatever the checks uh, amount is, that's 21X plus 65. And what if the checks are $5, okay? If X is five, if the checks are five, 21 times five plus 65 would be um, 105 plus 65. And that is 170 total, right? So it really depends, it really depends. Um,
But what do we have? Jackson and Brian collected an equal amount of money during car wash. So that means they're equal to each other. 14x plus 5 plus, uh, should be equal to 50 plus 7x. So now we can solve for x, what an actual x is. So 14x minus 7x should be equal to 50 minus 5 because we add, uh, we subtract 7x on both sides. We can subtract 5 on both sides and, and get the same thing here. And so that's going to be 7x is equal to 45. Wait, that's 15. So sorry, so that's 35. And so X is equal to five. So X is actually five. So it's not if anymore, it's actually five. So they collected $170 total. So knowing all the information that you can use um, is very important. All right, focus on math practices. What expressions can you write to represent the amount of money collected by each boy? How can you use these expressions to write an equation? So for each boy, we already wrote them down, right? 14x plus 15 and 50 plus 7x, or you can do 7x plus 50. Actually, let's keep it consistent. Let's write the variable term first. Okay, how can you use these to write an equation? Um, they collected the same amount of money. So 14x plus 15 should be equal to 7x plus 15. Okay. So that was just basically reiterating what we just did and solved above. So these are types of problems um, that will come out in this lesson where you have uh, variables on both sides and you will have to solve for it. So think about how we can use inverse operations to solve equations with variables on both sides. Example one, solve equations with fractional coefficients. Jonah and Lizzie are making smoothies that have the same number of fluid ounces. Okay, that's important information. Jonah uses four containers of yogurt to make his smoothie. Lizzie uses two and a half containers of yogurt to make her smoothie. How many ounces of yogurt X are in each container? Okay, so Jonah's smoothie um, has six ounces of juice and some yogurt. Lise's smoothie has 12 ounces of juice and some yogurt. And then, but we know both of them are gonna, both smoothies are gonna have the same number of fluid ounces. It's gonna be the same amount. So one way to solve this is um, by looking at the diagram. You can draw a bar diagram. Jonah's smoothie will have 4x plus 6 um, ounces, right? And then Lisa's smoothie will have 2 and a half times x plus 12. Okay, so um, the containers of yogurt are, are going to be, are, are, they're using the same containers of yogurt. Um, but we're going to figure out how much exactly would that be, okay, by solving for x. And then we can break down the bars so that we can see how many ounces are there, right, um, and do some subtraction. Four minus, we're going to make these, uh, this bar equal to each other. So we can break that down. That means that must be six because that's 12. And if that's six, if that's um, six, that should be four X minus six, right? Yeah. Um, 
but let's let's look at the equation. Okay, this one, um, if you break it like that, that also means that this part is also the same. So that's gonna be whatever you have four x minus two and half x, and that's gonna be one and half x, which is also gonna be six, right? And so you can figure x out like that as well. 1.5x must be equal to 6, which is which means x is going to be 4. And then you can figure out the bar diagram. Another way you can use an equation. You know that our smoothies are going to be equal amount. So 4x plus 6 must equal to 2.5x plus 12. And that means we can add the like terms by subtracting x um, 2.5x on both sides, and you can subtract 6 on both sides, and you have 1 and half x is equal to 6. So we basically did that in the bar diagram right away. We cut this one and said, oh, that's going to be 6, and because it needs to be equal to 12, and that's, that's 6. So 12 minus 6, it's 6. Um, but if you cut it like that, that also means that this part, the left bar, must be equal to one, a two and a half. That means the whole thing, which is which was originally four x, um, you cut it, so you subtract two and a half x, which means that's one and a half x. But you already know that's going to be six, right? So it's going to be one and a half x equals six um, by those two steps. So sometimes it might be easier to visually see, but if you're more comfortable with equation, you can stick with this equation, algebraic equation part. But there are different ways to represent this, okay? Um, and then you can solve for x, which is four. So there are four ounces of yogurt in each container, all right? So let's look at try question. Class A was given a sunflower with a height of eight centimeters that grows at a rate of three and a half centimeters per week. Class B was given a sunflower with a height of 10 centimeters that grows at a rate of three and one fourth centimeters per week. After how many weeks are the sunflowers are the same height? So we're going to let W be the number of weeks because we don't know how many number of weeks, right? Um, and we can say it, uh, every week per week, it grows three and a half centimeters. So we, we can multiply three and a half every week, but it starts from eight centimeters, okay? And then class B starts with 10 centimeters, but it grows three and one fourth every week. So after how many weeks would they be the same height means we can set them equal to each other and solve for W where those values are going to be the same for the expressions, right? So we're going to we're going to subtract three and one fourth W on both sides and get three one half minus three and one fourth. It's just one fourth W. So one four W plus eight is equal to 10. Right. And so we can subtract eight on both sides as well and get one fourth W is equal to two. And so multiply the reciprocal four over one, four over one, which is one W is equal to two times four, eight. The sunflowers are the same height after eight weeks. Okay. To convince me. How can you check your work to make sure the value of the variable makes the equation true? How can you check your answers? You can go backwards. If W is eight, you can check if the expressions are um, equal to each other, right? So three times two times eight plus eight, is that equal to? three over four times eight plus 10. And you can check three times two, six plus one, seven over two times eight plus eight, and then 13 over four times eight plus 10. And that's going to be 28 plus eight, 
and 26 plus 10. And that's going to be 36 is equal to 36. And so it's correct. Okay, so basically, what did you do? Explain what we just did. You're going to substitute the variable um, we found for w into both sides of the equations. If we get the same number on both sides of the equal sign, the value makes the equation. So that means when W is eight, the values are the same. They're both 36 uh, centimeters high. Okay, let's look at the next example. Solve equations with decimal coefficients. Teresa earns a weekly salary of $925 and a 5% commission on her total sales. Ramon earns a weekly salary of $1,250 and a 3% commission on sales. What amount of sales X will result in them earning the same amount for the week? So we want to figure out when they will earn the same amount. And X will represent the amount of sales that they have. So whatever amount of sales they have, um, the commission is based on the percentage of their different commissions. So every week, Teresa has a fixed price of 925. Ramon has a fixed price of 1,250. But then the more commission, the more sales they make individually, um, they're gonna get some extra money. Okay, Teresa has more percentage of commission than Ramon. So we'll see how much money, how much sales do they have to make in order to, um, in order for them to have the same money, like as a total, right? So we're gonna write the expression 0.05x plus 925 is equal to 0.03x plus 1250 and solve for x. Using the bar diagram, you can break this, break this bar over here like that. And we know that this part is going to be 0.03x, which means that 0.05x minus 0.03x, which is 0.02x. And because this is 925, this and this whole thing has to be 1,250, we know that the remaining part here must also equal to 1,250 minus 200, uh, 925, which is 325. And they must equal to each other. So 0.02x equals 325 gives you x is equal to uh, 16,250. If you multiply, um, if you divide by 0.02 on both sides. But in fractions, that is 2 over 100 x, which is 1 over 50 x. So you're really multiplying 50 to 325, and that's 16,250. Okay, so if they sell, uh, if they make sales of $16,250, um, they will earn some money, some extra, this X is not the amount of money they earn. They just get um, some percentage. So Teresa gets 5%, um, Ramon gets 3% of commission. And, uh, and when they make this amount of sales, that means they get the same amount of money total, including their base fee, okay? All right, example three. Solve equations with negative coefficients. Kelsey withdrew, withdraws $25 per week from her bank account. Each week, Chris deposits $15, $15 of his allowance and $20 earned from dog walking into his bank account. After how many weeks will they have the same amount of money in the bank? So Kelsey 
um, withdraws 25, so takes out $25 per week. So 20X X would be how much money she would take out um, total, right? And uh, she starts with 550. So 550 minus 25X would be her expression. And then Chris deposits 15, okay? And 20 earned from dog walking into his bank account, okay? And then, wait, it starts with 10, but then um, every week. So that's not just one time. So she, he starts with 10, but then Chris um, deposits, like puts money into the bank. Uh, 15 every week and 20 every week, right? So together you add the like terms and, and you can see that in total, he deposits $35 every week. So he's adding money to the bank. Kelsey is just withdrawing money. So it's getting low, balance is getting low and lower. Chris's balance is getting higher and higher, right? after each week. So these are the expressions that we're gonna use. We want to see when they're gonna have the same amount of money after how many weeks. So let them equal to each other. And we're gonna solve for X. You can add 25 X on both sides, subtract 10 on both sides and get 540 equals 60 X. And if you divide 60 by both sides, you get X is equal to nine. So after nine weeks, they'll have the same amount of money in their bank account. How do you check? You can check by solving um, for, for the actual balance. 550 minus 25 times nine is um, 225, negative 225. So um, 550, Uh, minus 225 is 325. And see if um, Chris has the same thing, same balance. 10 plus 35 times 9 is 10 plus 315. And so that's 325. So yes, they have the same balance. So nine weeks is going to be the correct answer. Let's try um, try the equation here in the try problem. 96 minus 4.5y minus 3.2y equals 5.6y plus 42.8. Um, please solve for y. See if you can do it by yourself and come back when you're ready for answer. Okay, are you ready? Yeah, so if you have um, like terms, what do you do? you combine the like terms. You can combine the negative uh, y terms over here. You can add 4.5 and 3.2 and get 7.7. .7. So that's negative 7.7y is equal to 5.6y plus 42.80. Okay, um, it's getting simpler each step. Uh, what else can you do? You can add 7.7y on both sides so that we have a positive coefficient on the right side. If you subtract 5.6y on both sides, that's also fine, but you have to multiply or divide by a negative coefficient later, okay? So either way, I'm gonna add 7.7y on both sides and get 96 is equal to, um, 13.3y. And then let's move. And then we're going to subtract 42.8 on both sides. Okay. And then 96 minus 42.8 is 53.2 is equal to 13.3 y and we're going to divide both sides by 13.3 and y uh wait 53.2 
divided by 13.3 is exactly four. So y is four. Okay, did you get it right? Good, if you got it right. All right, so let's summarize our lesson. When two expressions represent equal quantities, they can be set equal to each other. Then you can use inverse operations and properties of equality to combine like terms and solve for the unknown. So this is one way, the algebraic way. Another way is a bar diagram. Um, you, so remember, you can break a bar here and represent um, uh, each one. So that's going to be 3x, which means this is 1x. And you know that um, this, the whole thing is 15. That's 12. So 12 plus 3 must be 15. So x is equal to 3. That was easy. All right, that was 7 2. Solve equations with variables on both sides. In the next lesson, we'll be able to um, learn how to solve multi step equations. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. If you have any questions, please ask Ms. King in class. Bye.